Hey, Justin Popovich here, founder of bestqualityplr.com. I want to address a statement I hear people saying a lot of the time, and that is, help, membership sites are confusing. And so I wanted to create a training to help relieve your, quote, lack of membership site pains. And I want to do this in a way where we can break it down through my experiences, having built a number of successful membership sites. But at the end, given that this is a presentation from a PLR company, I want to talk about how private label rights material can fit into some of your membership site planning. But first, let's actually talk about some of the things you need to know and be aware of if you're just getting started or if you're looking at building a membership site and mainly getting the benefit from that, which is ongoing, repeatable, recurring revenue. So I have an assumption that goes into the beginning of this training, and that is I'm going to be talking about the concepts of membership sites from the perspective of building an info product or information product, content-based if you, whatever you want to call it, membership model. So you're going to be, it's a type of site where you'll be updating a training type of content on an ongoing basis. It could be videos like this, it could be ebooks, it could be recorded webinars that you're doing. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's basically you providing information in some form of recorded format. And this is kind of different from other models, which I'll quickly mention so you can kind of see the difference. Other models might be more of like a community where you have, let's say, a membership-based forum where you have to log in and you can go and chat with other people of a similar or like mind who may, may be giving each other advice on certain topics. Or it could be a, a support type of forum. I'm a member of a, a few of these where uh, I, I bought some WordPress themes and I'm a member of their support site so they can get support on an ongoing basis. That's another type of membership model. Another one might be a coaching or advice-based site where you have access to one or more mentors or coaches who are providing advice and you're paying a monthly fee to get access to these customized sessions. Sometimes they're live calls, sometimes they're recorded. So it's similar to the info product model, but it's more, um, it is more geared towards direct mentors. So all of these would really apply, okay? So you, no matter what you're trying to build, if it's any of the ones I mentioned here or something different that I didn't even mention, all of the lessons I'm going to talk about in the next few slides will apply, but I'm coming from the perspective of this first bullet point, which is info product based memberships. Now, the key here is you want to understand the main reasons why people would want to be members and stay on as members. That, that is when you build a membership site, if you're just the beginning phases, this is what you have to be asking yourself and thinking about it from a number of different angles. Why are people going to want to join and why will they want to stay? Because every single month when they get that payment, believe me, they see the payment, they're going to be questioning, is this something I want to keep for next month? Or are you going to get tossed out like some of the other ones they've tossed out this month? <laughs> you don't want to be on the receiving end of that. So you always want to be aware of the main benefits and the advantages that they will gain by being a member at your site. So let's start thinking about that stuff and then go into the training here, which is, we're going to go into a number of parts. Let's talk about it in a sequential order. I've ordered these talking points, if you want to call them that, uh, just based on a random order, but I think it follows a nice sequence so you can go from top to bottom and come out at the end of this uh, enlightened about building your membership site. So first thing is member updates. Specifically, what are you going to be adding? So how often are you going to add new content? Some membership sites have updates every single day, and if that's the way you build it, your members come to expect it, they may check in every single day. Other membership sites, it might be a weekly type of thing, or a couple of times a week, or maybe it's just once, once a month because you're doing something really big. It's a big undertaking, and it takes you, you know, three, the first three weeks of the month to build the thing. I don't know what it is, but it's up to you to set the member expectations so that they know exactly how often they're going to be getting new content. And of course, you can evolve and, and grow, and this can be dynamic over time, but make sure you know going into this thing what your average update frequency is going to be. Next, you want to consider in terms of member updates how you want to do your member broadcasts. Usually, with most, once you get your payment systems in place and some of the techie stuff in place, usually what happens is you can automatically add the email address of the buyer of your membership site uh, offer. You can add them to your mailing list for members only. So if you're using an AWeber or a GetResponse type of autoresponder system, you would create a list just for members of your membership site so you can send specific broadcast messages to them. 
and you want to figure out how often you want to do that as well. Is it do you, are you going to do a a uh, twice a week type of update? Are you going to update them every single day? Are you going to do it once a month like a digest? Uh, are you going to be a little bit flexible with it? Make sure you schedule it and you know exactly what you want to do there. And this kind of ties into th this third point here, which is it's all about building relationships. So if you're doing a personally branded membership site where it's your name selling it and it's your name and face on the inside of it, or maybe it's your name and your face and your team on the inside of it, then that's one type of relationship building. If it's more of a brand where it's not a specific named individual, but it's more a brand with a bunch of people that work inside of this company, um, that's good as well. But you still need to be able to build relationships with your customers. And it's going to be the role of somebody or a group of people to do that. And I don't care if this is an internet marketing based type of product or whatever it is, you're selling online and you are fairly anonymous in the beginning. You want to be able to make a personal connection with your customers. They're far more likely to stick around. So this includes things like giving them a call on the phone and saying, hello, thanks for joining. If there's anything we can do to help out, you know, we're here. Uh, giving away your Skype address so that they can get in touch with you beyond just your help desk, making them feel comfortable that you're not just here for, you know, to get the recurring payment, you're here to, to stay. And again, not every membership site is required to do this, but you're certainly going to give yourself a leg up over the competition if you go above and beyond. And whether you do this personally or you have somebody on your team do this, uh, in my opinion, and I, I think most people that have success memberships, membership sites would agree, you will definitely be giving uh, yourself a, a leg up. So the final point here is, when you do that, when you start building relationships, you can start asking questions of your audience. You can find out exactly what it is they want. They may have joined your membership in the beginning to get one thing. Maybe they wanted to download some of your products, but then they got in there and realized, wow, they, these people really have a lot to offer. I've really, I'm, I'm really learning a lot just by being around them. And they might have further requests. They might have further needs that are not being met that you currently aren't meeting either, but you have an opportunity to do so and to, you know, to keep a member and to maybe find new members based on these needs. So you can find content requests from them. Maybe they have a new product you want them to develop, develop or just ideas in general. By building those relationships, a lot of the time your new content, your new material, um, whatever it is you're doing in the future, will be inspired by your existing members. And that's powerful. It's great for retention and it's great for meeting or finding new customers. Also, you want to be considering you need, they need reasons to stick around here. I mentioned this at the beginning of the presentation. It's one thing to get them to join and pay that first initial monthly payment, but how do you get them to stay? You have to keep proving yourself over and over and over again. And I mean, one of the benefits of creating a membership site is there will be, let's face it, there, there will be a certain group of members that just continue to pay and they don't use it. They either forget to, re, to, to cancel or they're just, they're going to come back to it in a while. And that's fine. Your job is to make sure that you fulfill your end of the bargain and give them plenty of reasons to stay. So even if they haven't really been paying attention yet, they're going to start eventually. And when they do start paying attention, you want them to be blown away. So every single member has more than enough reasons to stick around. So one of the, th one of the ways you can do that is by making, if it's, a, if it's especially this info product based membership model, make the access per product cheaper. So if you sell, uh, if, if you are growing a, a, a database of products and you sell each product at one price, and ideally it's going to be a lot higher than the price they would pay per product as a member, right? So if it's $25 a product and you have 10 products, and maybe you add a few a month, but the, the cost of the membership is $25 a month and you're releasing three or four of these a month, obviously they're going to be paying way less with their, mem with their, with their renewal fees to get all of those products than they would if they were having to buy each and every one individually. So the pain of canceling is quite high in this case because if they really like your stuff and more importantly, if they need your stuff, then now they're going to have a real objection in their own mind when it comes to that time to cancel. They probably won't if you've done this right. And excuse my iPhone noises in the background there. <laughs> Next, um, another thing you can do is have exclusive content that's just not for sale otherwise. Make a point of putting stuff into your membership that are only for members. Nobody else ever gets this stuff. It could be uh, just products that you've developed. It could be private trainings. It could be interviews you've, you've done with other experts that you just won't get unless you're a member. Now I'm going to get in, in a little while, I'm going to get into some technical stuff where um, you can be, you can get certain membership scripts where 
you can at least show non-members, hey, look what this, you know, look what we put in this month. We've got an interview with, you know, expert so and so, uh, but you just can't get that. You know, here's here's a preview of that page, but you know what? If you want this, you got to be a member, and this is one example of things exclusive content that our, our members get that no one else gets. So hey, why don't you consider becoming a member? That's definitely something you want you want to be doing and and adding more of this exclusive content on an ongoing basis extremely high value there for members who are already there and for people considering buying into your membership. Another exclusive option here is is maybe having some kind of exclusive uh, support or advice mechanism where they get a, a heightened level of access to you as a, as a model or a mentor or as a company in general that you just don't offer otherwise, right? So in some cases, Maybe you, it's, it's some kind of group coaching that you don't do coaching otherwise, but you do have coaching available just for members and people will pay for that because you're an expert on a, a certain area or topic. And, and how, great of, how great would it be to become a member of this person's site? Um, not only do I get all their stuff, but I get this advanced access to them. That's pretty cool. I'm going I'm to join for a month or two and see how that goes. So that's some of the things that, they, uh, that you can do to enhance that value. And then finally, this goes without saying, but I did want to just kind of stress it, and that's that the perceived value needs to be far higher than the monthly fee. Remember the buyer psychology here. It's At the end of the day, it's still money out of their pocket. They still have to, at some level, justify that monthly purchase to themselves. And if you're giving them plenty of reasons to stick around for another month and wait it out, even if they haven't been using it, um, the more reasons you give them, the more likely you're going to keep a higher number of members. So don't hold back when it comes to doing this. Give it, give it your all. And in fact, go even beyond that if you can. Put, give them as many reasons as possible. Now, membership levels is another big discussion. People get really tripped up on this one. So I thought it would be kind of cool to discuss this. This is especially powerful for you if you've never even tried to set up a membership site and you're just taking notes and getting started. I'm glad you're here because I wish I heard some of this advice, especially on this slide, before I got started. So first point, it is very, 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 very tempting to start with multiple levels. But here's a, an important point. The more choice you give people on a sales page of any sort usually means lower conversions. So think about it. If you are a prospective buyer and you get to somebody's offer and they explain all the problems that they're going to solve for you and you're getting really excited and you start seeing yourself in possession of this thing and then they go, buy now, click this button to get it. That's pretty easy. But if they go, all right, are you ready to buy? Here's one option. Here's a second option. Here's a third option. And oh, wait, here's a fourth option. Let me try to explain all of the intricate differences between A, B, C, and D and get you thoroughly confused. And you go, uh, I don't even know what I'm getting here. I don't even know if this is a good deal anymore. I'm going to hit the back button. Not always that way, but it certainly is more likely to happen the more options that you have. So if you have never sold a membership before, then you probably want to do this. And that is start with a single offer and make it your best maximum value offer in the beginning and do this because you want to build a client base. You want to get a bunch of people that are confident enough to buy your membership. And this does a couple of things. One, it gets you a customer base like we talked about, but it gives you the confidence to know that I can sell this bloody thing. Because you don't know. And If you're just starting, you don't know if you're going to be able to sell people on a recurring monthly thing. It's a tough sell. Even at like 15 bucks a month, a lot of people, when they see the per month fee, they back away, they shy away. And so you want to make sure that you sell your maximum value offer and bring everything you have to the table at the beginning. And then later, if you want to introduce lower levels and increase the price of that maximum value, that's great. Uh, but now you've proven yourself and you've proven that it sells because you have a customer base. And what's really important here is that make sure you reward those people who are the early adopters. Show them gratitude and thank them for taking a chance on you and having faith and believing that this was of value and let them stick around for whatever rates they got in at. So if, you know, if, if they got in at 15 bucks a month and now your membership is 40 bucks a month, let them continue to pay $15 a month. That goes very, very, that goes a really long way for customer loyalty. And trust me, they, these are the kind of people that will spend more money on you in the future anyways when you have premium offers or 
a second membership site, they're, they're going to be more likely to join because you've really taken care of them. So always think about the lifetime value of the customer from that regard. Now, let's talk a little bit about how to actually sell the membership. We, we talked about some of the, the intricate details of selling when it came to membership levels, but I want to go a bit deeper here. And this will be good for you when you start to plan, well, how do I want to do this? Like, how am I actually going to bring this offer to the market? So what I often recommend for people is if you're just getting started, then you might want to put the whole membership option on hold. Maybe you just uh, maybe you just put that on the back burner for a little while and do this instead. Prove yourself by selling individual products to warm up an audience. If you do not have an audience yet, then you want to make sure that you can start selling to a cold audience as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Sometimes this means starting off with low price products. That's a great way to start. But it might also mean uh, starting off with individual items rather than recurring because they just don't know enough about you yet. They don't trust you yet. And if you give them something that they can warm up to you with, well, that's a good start. And then you might want to create a couple of offers to show some consistency. Maybe come out with offer number one, uh, you know, and then a week later have a second offer to the same buyers and even some new buyers that shows an expansion on that topic. Perfect example here at Best Quality PLR. We started, we did not start with a membership site. We started with a single PLR offer just to see how it would sell. And thankfully for us, it sold fairly well, even though we didn't really know what we were doing, to be honest. We put out an offer and just thought, let's see what people think. And we made enough sales to give us confidence to do it again. And so a couple of weeks later, we created a, another PLR product, similar type of product, but in a different niche. And lo and behold, people bought it again. And some of those people were the same people. So we did this a few more times. And it, it, that, that's the point where we started realizing, okay, we've got products, they're selling. So this works. We're, we've got some confidence going here. And we've got a few repeat buyers. I remember going through after three or four sales or three or four product launches going, there's got to be a dozen people here that bought the same four products. This is great. What if we offer those people some kind of membership offer? And that's exactly how we started our membership site but it allowed us to warm up an audience and also prove that this membership site was worth building. It, you know, it's now worth the effort that it's going to take to build a WordPress site and find a membership site plugin and you know, figure out how to lock down the members area and do all that techy stuff that's going to cost time and money. But you don't necessarily want to make all of that investment before you know that you've got some people that are willing to buy this stuff. So that's a great way of doing it. Once you've done that, offer a quote, no brainer, I'm sure you love that phrase, <laughs> but offer a no brainer membership option. So in our case, we were offering these products, let's say, I think it was around like $16. And so we had people uh, buying, you know, $16 products times four. So they've, now they've spent $64. We offered an initial membership op option of like $15 a month. So these people saw that, hey, we released four products in a span of a month or so, and now, there's, now they're offering me this $15 a month option. They've proven to me over the last you know, month or so that they could do four. They're probably going to keep doing it. Let's roll with it. And, and they did, and we did, and they were really happy with their investments. So it made it very easy for us to sell some really early memberships at a low price, and, and, and then we could keep going and build it from there. Um, this, is, this final point is absolutely key, and nothing solves this other than time. Selling of a membership site gets easier over time. Consistency is your best feature. The longer you've been in business, the easier it will be to close deals, to get people to buy in. When you can show them that you've got content from 2008, from 2009, from 2010, and now we're approaching 2014, maybe if depending on when you're watching this, it could be after that, um, that's a long time to be in business, especially in this fast-moving internet world. I, as a buyer, I'm sure you would agree, I'd be way more tempted to join a membership that's been around for a while than something that's brand new. And so you can't do that. You can't magically create something that's been around forever until you get started. So make consistency your key. And that raises kind of a secondary point here, which is you got to have patience for this stuff. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs. There'll be times where you question it. And, you know, sometimes that questioning is good. Maybe you're onto something that's just not going to work. It's the fun of business, but uh, the longer you can stick it out, the better chance you have of acquiring more members over time. So don't forget that. Now, let's talk about tech tip number one. I want to get a little techie with you here, but you can't have a membership site without at least knowing the tech stuff involved. Now, you don't have to do it personally, but you're going to have to figure out a way to do all this stuff. And the first one is locking down member content. So 
you are going to start publishing content that's for your members only and you want to show your members that you care about their investment and that non-members aren't just going to some kind, somehow kind of find a back door to your stuff. You don't want that happening. So uh, first and foremost, WordPress is by far your best option, okay? Um, I'm sure you already know this, but if you don't, using a WordPress blog and setting up posts just makes your life a lot easier and it makes finding plugins like the ones I've listed here a lot easier because most of these are designed to work with WordPress. Uh, so I just put up a list here on the page and you can write a note of these if you want. I'm also including the, um, the PowerPoints or sorry, the PDF of what you're looking at right now. So you can just read it. But um, wish list, digital access pass, often called DAP, member mouse, A member, WP member, S2 member, magic member, and DL guard. These are at least for me, the, the ones I see come pop, popping up a lot of the time. The last one, DL guard, is not used quite as often, but it's actually quite simple, and it's something you might want to consider. I mention it because we use DL Guard at, at Best Quality PLR uh, in part of our process. We also use Digital Access Pass. We've used other software items as well, so it really comes down to your needs. And unfortunately, there's really there's no right way of doing this, so you're just going to have to experiment, ask around, talk to other people who have done memberships, and just try to make your best guess from there. And the other thing you want to do is also make sure that you have unprotected content for branding. This is huge for us at Best Quality PLR. We've got hundreds and hundreds of blog posts that are protected content where you have to be a member and you can download the material. However, um, we have a lot of sections that are unprotected that are educational, like this type of video. And it's great because we, we publish it, we can use it as training for our members, but we can also use show our prospects, here's some really great content that we pump out on a regular basis, and it's great for Google. The, you know, we're doing a training video on how to use PLR, well, that's a blog post on our membership site that's unprotected, that brings in traffic, and then people start looking at this unprotected content and going, ooh, what's all this protect, protected stuff over here? I wish I could have that. What, what does it cost to join? So that's a, a great marketing method and it's great for branding. Another thing you want to ask yourself, we don't do this at Best Quality PLR, but you might want to consider it is, uh, do you want to have a free membership option? A, a lot of software, like the ones I listed on the right side, uh, do have this. So you could have, hey, join as a free member and we're, get, we're going to drip feed a little bit of content for you so you get a, a feel for what we do and you get a, 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 an experience of our website, so to speak. And then if you like it, after seven days, we, you know, we can have you join our paid area. And these scripts, like Digital Access Pass and Wishlist, make it pretty easy for you to transition them from a free level where they only get a little bit uh, to a paid level where they get a lot more access or maybe it's all of the access depending on how, uh, what they bought. So that's tech tip, num tech tip number one. The next tech tip is affiliate program. So by far the best source of traffic for selling is to have affiliates promote your stuff because you don't have to go out of pocket to, to buy advertising or anything like that. You can have instant traffic from credible sources, usually from people that have customers, and all you do is pay, let's say, 50% of the sales to that person. Yes, it's 50% less than you would get otherwise, but how do you find the customers? You don't. You need affiliates, so this is a great model, but you need to figure out... Uh, how are you going to track affiliates and their sales because you want to make sure that you take care of your affiliates. So some plugins include this. The, the plugins I listed on the previous page, for example, Digital Access Pass has an affiliate module. Um, full disclosure here, we don't really use it all that much in my business because it doesn't work all that well for our needs. At least we haven't figured it out. So I don't want to slight DAP because I know, I know a lot of customers do use their affiliate module. We just haven't made it work yet. And so it's a question to take into consideration. What kind of affiliate program do you want to run? There's tons of them out there. Um, one of the ones we use is called JVZoo, and we, we create these um, side launches where we do a, an offer outside of our main website in a specials area, and we do a short-term offer on that, and we let our affiliates promote those. And that's how we work with a lot of our affiliates. So that's something you might want to consider. The key thing here is there's really no right way to do it. You're going to have to do a lot of research. Unfortunately, I can't give, I wish I could give you an answer, but there isn't a single way of doing this. And even the people I partner with, we all seem to do it a little bit of a different way. Um, so it's just one of those things you're going to have to take some time and figure out what's the right model for you to track your affiliates for specifically for membership based type of selling. Uh, and then the last thing I want to mention here is certain membership uh, or affiliate programs do with a lifetime model. So uh, here, what would work there is I refer a customer to you, um, they buy something, and then you pay me 
uh, for the rest of that customer's lifetime with you. And whether they buy something, you know, tomorrow or three years from now, I always get credit as the affiliate. That's pretty powerful for me as the affiliate. Um, the challenge is if I'm referring somebody to you that's already been referred by somebody else, then I don't make any affiliate commissions on that. So that's kind of a downfall. It's the, the, the buyer is tied to a single affiliate forever. Uh, then there's cookie-based tracking, which is most of the times it's the last affiliate to refer the person to your site would be the one paid on the next transaction and any subsequent transactions until a new affiliate may override that cookie by referring that same buyer on a different offer. Uh, again, I don't want to get into the full details of these type of models, but just kind of as a heads up there. And then finally, th this, this wouldn't be complete, of course, because this is a PLR website. It wouldn't be complete without talking a little bit about using PLR um, in your membership sites, especially for a content-based membership site like the one we're talking about here today. How can you use PLR to do a better job serving your members better and to sell more of your memberships? So I want to cover a few of the options here. These are the most common, but certainly absolutely not limited to this. So just bear with me while I go through these, but also keep in mind that we could probably spend a whole day talking about different options here. First one, uh, PLR products as download content for members only. So that's the most basic obvious one you could do. Let's say you're the type of membership site where people pay you a monthly fee and they go in and they download new stuff as you upload it. Great. Well, you could buy PLR products that teach certain things and without you having to do any work, the product itself might teach something really well. All you have to do is upload the PDF or upload the video or whatever that PLR provide you, provider provided to you. Um, so that's one that's pretty obvious. The next one is PLR as training member or material for members only. So case in point, bestqualityplr.com, we have a, a whole section of products our members can go in and download and we upload new products all of the time. But we also have a secondary feature and it, to me it's of equal value if not even more important and that's member training. We're, we're constantly updating our member training area showing members how to do different things, providing different tips, often answering questions they've asked us at our help desk in the form of training. Well, you might go and find PLR providers who have great video tutorials on, I don't know, how to set up a WordPress site for a beginner. You know, that you could grab those videos and put it into a training area. Your members go, wow, look at all this new training we got this month, plus all the products. That's pretty good value add. I'm going to stick around for another month. So that's one example. Another one is could using PLR to build your prospect list and then selling the membership later. Earlier we talked about having a freebie area or free membership option. Well, maybe some of the content you give away to your freebie members is PLR based. You don't necessarily want to invest uh, all kinds of time and money in building a free product. So maybe you take some PLR products that are of a good quality and, and teach relevant content to the stuff you teach in your business and rebrand that PLR as freebie material and then your you know your prospective buyers go okay this is pretty cool uh, I'm, I'm really interested you know let me go and buy it for a month and see what else I can get here. Another one could be PLR bundled into your single product offerings either directly or as a value-add bonus to then upsell the membership. If you remember our model earlier we created a single PLR product sold it for let's say 16 bucks did a few more, and then later on offered a membership site to those buyers. That's one thing you could do here is you could create a product. I don't know, maybe you're an expert on how to sell things. You're a sales expert. Well, you have a selling system that you want to sell for nine, 97 bucks. Maybe you have a bonus in there that's you know the top 100 ways that, to close deals with confidence. You could go and find a PLR product that actually explains that. I'm just giving you an example here. Well, that PLR product is giving you incredible value add bonus here on your already good front end product. Now, on the back end of that offer, you upsell your membership. You're going to get more buyers on the front end because you have that bonus. So you're going to get, uh, you know, take existing offers and make them that much more appealing with a PLR membership. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I've covered a lot to do with membership sites in a single sitting here. And quite honestly, I did this all in one take. I'm quite proud of myself. <laughs> but I hope you got a lot of value from it. And I encourage you to take a look around at bestqualityplr.com. We have some other free training as well as this. And um, if, if you have any questions, please do let us know. And best of luck with your membership sites. This is by far one of the most profitable things you can do for your business. And it's a great thing you can do for customers because it gives you an area to help them on an ongoing basis. And they'll be really happy to work with you. Thanks for watching.